Our Wang Bin is a smart and popular young man who is pursued by many girls. However, he remains loyal to his girlfriend, Zhao Qian. Despite his intelligence and popularity, Wang Bin comes from a low-income family and takes on various part-time jobs to earn money. But all of it is spent on dating, leaving him with little to nothing. He lacks prior dating experience and is determined to do everything he can to make his girlfriend happy. In addition to his intelligence, Wang Bin is also skilled at gaming. He completes a game in just a month, earning him the title of the fastest and highest scoring player. He's offered the opportunity to travel to an apocalyptic world but is warned about the dangers and the risk to his life. Initially surprised, he accepts the offer, but when nothing happens, he feels like a fool for falling for what he believes to be a trick. Wang Bin receives another message confirming his decision and providing him with a set of rules for his journey to the apocalyptic world. These rules include, if you die in the apocalyptic world, you die in reality. Survive for seven days in the apocalyptic world to return. The time ratio is one to seven, meaning one day in reality is seven days in the apocalyptic world. Only non-living items can be brought between the two worlds. The apocalyptic world has no rules and is dangerous. The journey begins in four hours. Wang Bin, excited about his upcoming journey to the apocalyptic world, decides to prepare food and items for seven days but realizes he has no money left due to spending it all on Zhao Qian. He turns to his friends, Hong Fei and Li Ping, for a loan. They are happy to see him but advise him not to spend all his money on Zhao Qian. Despite their own financial constraints, they lend him the money, emphasizing their friendship. Wang Bin vows to repay them when he becomes wealthy in the apocalyptic world. Wang Bin manages to gather the necessary items, including food, water, defensive gear, and a shovel as a potential weapon for the apocalyptic world. He's confident that he can survive for seven days with these supplies. However, he also worries about Zhao Qian, realizing she didn't seek him out today. He wonders if she's busy with her project and hopes that she's doing well. Wang Bin contacts Zhao Qian to let her know that he'll be doing part-time work and will return in two days, promising her a surprise. Unbeknownst to him, Zhao Qian is with another man. Wang Bin is then transported to the apocalyptic world and finds himself in an abandoned building. Despite the shocking sight of hordes of zombies outside, he decides to venture out and scout the area. Wang Bin begins exploring the apocalyptic world and formulates a survival strategy. He decides to always carry the shovel as a means of defense against unexpected attacks. He opts for paths with fewer zombies to gain a better understanding of his surroundings. He avoids engaging in direct combat with the zombies, preferring to let them be when they're occupied. Additionally, he plans to use the zombies' sense of hearing to distract them. While navigating the apocalyptic world, Wang Bin initially finds it relatively manageable by avoiding zombies and searching for valuable items. However, he becomes aware of something following him, raising concerns about whether it's a human or an intelligent zombie. He becomes wary, realizing that if it's a human, they could be more dangerous than the zombies. He decides to run and hide. Regardless of their identity, Wang Bin is worried they might attempt to steal his belongings. Wang Bin, deciding to ambush the potential threat, positions himself on the stairs. However, he is caught off guard when the attacker, a woman, enters through the windows from behind. She brandishes a knife and demands his food. Wang Bin attempts to resist, but the woman easily overpowers him, keeping him at bay with the knife. Desperate, Wang Bin offers her the canned food from his bag, which immediately catches her attention. Seizing the opportunity, he uses a stun gun to disable the woman and protect himself. Wang Bin, showing mercy, offers the woman some food in exchange for her dagger. She's surprised to find the food is not expired and becomes curious about his identity. As he searches for a hiding place for his bag, another group blocks his path, also intent on taking his belongings. A fight ensues, and Wang Bin manages to wound one of them, causing panic as the blood could attract zombies. He seizes the chance to escape but reaches a dead end, where the group corners him. They identify themselves as members of the tiger group. In the midst of this confrontation, the woman decides to intervene and help Wang Bin. She takes down one of the group members and swiftly eliminates another using the dagger she received from Wang Bin. Witnessing someone's death for the first time, Wang Bin is left in shock. The remaining enemy flees, but Wang Bin attempts to stop him, concerned that he might call for reinforcements. However, the woman prevents him from pursuing and instructs him to follow her, as the zombies are approaching. Wang Bin believes that he made the right decision. He sees the woman as a kind person and hopes to build a good partnership with her in the apocalyptic world. After an hour of fleeing from the threat of zombies, they reach the woman's hideout. Wang Bin expresses gratitude for her earlier rescue, but she remains wary, brandishing a knife and demanding that he drop the stun gun. Reluctantly, Wang Bin complies, and she kicks the stun gun away. 
Wang Bin attempts to earn her trust and shows her his food supply, offering it in exchange for staying in her hideout for seven days. The woman is surprised by the quality of the food and questions its source. Wang Bin pleads with her to trust him, though he can't reveal the source of the food at the moment. He emphasizes that he only needs shelter for seven days and promises to bring even more delicious food if they meet again. Wang Bin and Xiao Yu reach an agreement, allowing Wang Bin to stay in her hideout for seven days. She warns him not to enter her room. They introduce themselves, with Wang Bin extending his hand, but Xiao Yu only reveals her name. Upon entering his room, Wang Bin is eager to rest, feeling that it should be a safe place as Xiao Yu has blocked the windows. He also notices the luxury of the house and becomes curious about the possibility of valuable items within. Wang Bin decides to search the house and discovers pieces of jewelry, estimating their potential value for resale back in his world. Wang Bin imagines a future where he becomes wealthy and proposes to Zhao Qian. He then goes to Xiao Yu's room to inquire about the jewelry he found. However, he is surprised to walk in on her while she is changing, and he quickly exits the room. Xiao Yu questions whether Wang Bin intends to take back the food, but when she emerges from her room, he asks if she would be willing to sell the jewelry to him. Xiao Yu expresses her indifference toward the jewelry, explaining that in the past, the area was inhabited by wealthy individuals, and many buildings and houses likely contained various pieces of such jewelry. She questions the usefulness of possessing these items in the apocalyptic world, as they cannot be eaten. Wang Bin tells the importance of the jewelry to him and inquires if there are more such items in the area. Xiao Yu agrees to help him search the area for more jewelry. The following day, Wang Bin is pleased with his collection of jewelry. Xiao Yu then informs him about a house that has a safe. They arrive at the location and find the safe. Wang Bin recognizes that such safes usually have a thief alarm, but due to the lack of electricity in the apocalyptic world, they have the time to make multiple attempts. After some effort, Wang Bin successfully manages to open the safe. Wang Bin discovers money, jewelry, and gold bars. However, he notices that the money is different from his own world and discards it. When they return home, Wang Bin examines the jewelry, prompting Xiao Yu to question why these items hold such value for him. Wang Bin explains that these seemingly useless items can be exchanged for more food. Xiao Yu was surprised and asked if this meant that if she found more of these items, he would provide her with more food in return. Wang Bin asked the system if he would meet her again, and the system confirmed that he would appear in the nearby area on his next trip. They made a deal. Wang Bin would bring food in exchange for her help to find more jewelry. Xiao Yu mentioned that the city's food was scarce, and people had to resort to eating animals. The food Wang Bin had was considered luxurious. Wang Bin asked why they hadn't grown vegetables and built strong walls and infrastructure. Xiao Yu explained the government had already established safe areas for human habitation. Xiao Yu explained that the government had established safe bases with high walls and soldiers guarding them to keep zombies out. These bases were a survivor's dream, but very few made it there. The government was working on finding a cure for the infection and becoming self-sufficient. Xiao Yu added that if one had absolute power, they could build such safe places and there would be no need to fight for food in the city. Wang Bin was asked how he managed to exchange jewelry and gems for precious food. Wang Bin explained that he was a merchant who collected gold and jewelry to exchange for food. Xiao Yu cautioned him not to go out alone and mentioned setting traps for safety. They heard someone caught in one of the traps, and upon looking outside, they saw a group of people they assumed were from the White Tiger group. Wang Bin expressed frustration that letting one of them escape earlier had brought them so much trouble. Xiao Yu advised them to leave immediately since they couldn't fight the group from earlier. Meanwhile, the one who had previously escaped confirmed to their boss that she saw the girl they were searching for in the area. The boss ordered his men to find her. Xiao Yadik Wang Bin to another safe location, a building with a noisy first floor full of zombies. Wang Bin complained about the noise, and Xiao Yu reassured him that the stairs had collapsed, so as long as they didn't make loud sounds, the zombies below couldn't reach them. Xiao Yu was surprised to see that Wang Bin's phone still had a battery and asked if there were any songs on it. Wang Bin let her listen to music on his phone, which cheered her up. He realized that she was a normal girl, and songs were a luxurious form of leisure, or they might not even exist in their world. Xiao Yu started to tear up as she remembered her family and handed the earpiece back, advising him to save the battery. Wang Bin asked her why she had started crying, and she explained that she hadn't heard music in a long time, and the song reminded her of the moment she spent with her family. Wang Bin realized that Xiao Yu must have had a difficult life up until now. He returned the earpiece and suggested they listen to music together, promising to bring another phone along with a portable charger for her. She was happy and thanked him. He found Xiao Yu really beautiful and was attracted to her, but he reminded himself of Xiao Qian. They both listened to music and eventually fell asleep until the sun came up. Xiao Yu informed Wang Bin about the four major groups in the area. 
She explained that the White Tiger Group was one of them and controlled the West Area. The three robbers who had been after them were from the White Tiger Group. She regretted letting one of them escape, as it had exposed their location. Xiaoyu revealed that the White Tiger Group's leader had 60 subordinates with 10 or more guns, making them a formidable force. Their base was located in the tallest building in the West Area, near a large supermarket, taking control of all the available resources. Wang Bin realized it would be challenging to confront the White Tiger Group given their numbers. Xiaoyu then informed him about the other three major groups in the area. Furious Shark Group controlled the East Area, and they were the strongest with a leader who had 100 subordinates and more than 20 guns. The Bravery Eagle claimed the southern area and was the weakest group, with a leader who had 40 subordinates and fewer than 10 guns, but they possessed bombs and grenades. The Totem Bear Group ruled the north area, with a leader who also had 100 subordinates and more than 10 guns. These groups generally didn't invade each other's territories. There were others who either wandered alone or gathered in smaller groups. Currently, there are around 1,000 people living in the city, but it used to have 2 million residents. Most had turned into zombies or fled to other cities. When Wang Bin asked about the treasury in the city, Xiaoyu mentioned that the banks had been looted when the zombies appeared and most valuables were taken. However, if he was looking for gold bars, the Furious Shark Group's base should have a substantial quantity of them. The group members had robbed nearby banks and stored valuable items in their base when the zombies started appearing. Wang Bin was concerned about stealing the gold bars and valuables, and Xiaoye advised him to give up the idea. Wang Bin assured her that he wasn't that foolish. In the past few days, Wang Bin had been hiding in the building with Xiaoye without leaving. They had observed many people patrolling the area, likely members of the White Tiger Group. As it was time for Wang Bin to return to his world, he decided to leave all his food with Xiaoye before his departure. Xiaoye declined Wang Bin's offer to leave his food with her, but he assured her he would be fine and suggested she hide the food. He explained that he had to leave for seven days but promised to return and find her when he came back. Xiaoye hugged him and asked if he could stay or take her with him. However, Wang Bin apologized, saying he couldn't take her but promised to return with more food and useful items. As Wang Bin waited to be transported back to his world, he reflected on his time with Xiaoye. He thought that he usually shouldn't tell anyone where he would appear next time, but after spending time with her, he found her very reliable. He felt guilty because he was the reason she was in conflict with the White Tiger Group and was being hunted by them. He wanted to repay her and bring more good things the next time he returned. Xiaoya entered the room and saw that Wang Bin had disappeared, which left her disappointed. Wang Bin was excited after returning and wanted to share the news of his newfound wealth with Xiao Qian. When he called her, she informed him that she was looking for a new house with her family and would find him later. However, when Wang Bin asked where she was, her new boyfriend offered to buy her a new house if she broke up with Wang Bin immediately. Hearing this, she directed Wang Bin to the estate agency in Golden Leaf City. Wang Bin was overjoyed and decided to sell his loot first before heading to the estate agency to buy a mansion for Zhao Qian. Wang Bin arrived at the jewelry store looking dirty from his journey, and a rude employee initially brushed him away when he asked to speak to the manager. However, he presented a small jewel for analysis. The employee thought it was fake and threatened to call the police if he didn't leave. As Wang Bin was leaving, the manager stopped him and requested to examine the jewel. Upon seeing it, the manager was surprised. The employee tried to explain that Wang Bin was attempting to scam them, but the manager silenced her and ordered her to make some tea. The manager took Wang Bin to a VIP room, and Wang Bin introduced himself as Wang. He inquired about the price he would receive for the jewel but mentioned that if the offer was too low, he would consider other shops. After some thought, the manager offered 8 million, and Wang Bin acted unsurprised but was genuinely surprised by the amount. The manager added another 500k to the offer. Wang Bin agreed to the offer and stated that he had more of these jewels. He asked if the store would be interested in buying them, and the manager immediately agreed. After Wang Bin left the jewelry store, the manager scolded the employee for almost losing a major customer due to her initial dismissal of him. As Wang Bin headed to see Zhao Qian, he realized he was now a millionaire and still had some gold bars to sell. He planned to sell them in different places to avoid arousing suspicion. When he arrived at the estate agency and saw Zhao Qian with her new boyfriend, he questioned her. However, Li mocked Wang Bin for his messy appearance, and people in the building were also curious as to why they let him inside. Zhao Qian told Wang Bin they should break up because of their upcoming graduation and her desire to find someone who could provide for her. Wang Bin tried to convince her he could take care of her and questioned if her new boyfriend had forced her into the relationship. Zhao Qian asked Wang Bin to stop arguing and suggested they break up without further conflict. Li threatened Wang Bin and claimed that he had already done it with Zhao Qian. He even slapped Wang Bin. In response, Wang Bin kicked Li, 
knocking him down. Zhao Qin stopped the fight and emphasized that they were done, stating she wouldn't be with someone like Wang Bin. Wang Bin sighed, realizing he had wasted his time on her. As the guards arrived to intervene and escort Wang Bin away, he questioned their treatment of customers. An employee at the estate agency dismissed Wang Bin, claiming he couldn't afford even the cheapest house there, which cost 600k. The employee mocked him for dreaming and reminded him of his financial limitations. The employee further criticized Wang Bin for hitting a customer. The manager arrived and supported Li's side in the argument. Wang Bin expressed his displeasure with the way they treated customers, mentioning he had come to buy a house but their behavior had discouraged him. The manager apologized for the staff's actions but also warned Wang Bin about creating trouble and hitting their customer. Wang Bin explained that he initially wanted to buy a house, but their low-quality offerings had made him lose interest. The manager and others present believed Wang Bin was just acting. As he left, he bid farewell to Zhao Qian, expressing his hope that she wouldn't regret her choices and wishing her well. The manager stopped Wang Bin and inquired about the price range of the house he was looking for. Wang Bin stated he was interested in a 20 million mansion, which angered the manager and the staff, as they suspected he was lying. To test his claims, the manager showed him a mansion but wanted to see if he could genuinely afford it. Wang Bin agreed to provide evidence and proposed a wager. If he could prove his financial capacity, the three individuals who confronted him would have to crawl around the building. The manager accepted the challenge and promised to treat Wang Bin as a VIP if he could verify his claims. Li stood up pushing Zhao Qian and attempted to attack. However, Wang Bin knocked out Li with a gold bar he had thrown, leaving the onlookers surprised by the gold bar. Wang Bin displayed the substantial funds in his account, leaving the manager shocked. The manager quickly apologized and treated Wang Bin as a VIP. He also ordered the guard and the staff to start crawling. After purchasing the mansion, Wang Bin contemplated his next move. He bought the mansion, costing 30 million, not to show off but because he needed a secure place. He knew the importance of preparing more items and expressed his determination to acquire even more valuable items to increase his wealth. Fei and Ping had heard about the news of Xiao Qian cheating on Wang Bin and were worried. They tried calling Wang Bin, but he wasn't answering. To their surprise, they both received 1 million in their accounts. Wang Bin then called them and explained that he had won 1 billion in a lottery, which was the source of the money. Wang Bin expressed his gratitude, saying that the 1 million was nothing compared to the help they had provided him in the past. He emphasized the importance of their friendship and mentioned that there were many more things they needed to do together. Ping asked if the news of Wang Bin's breakup with Zhao Qian and confrontation with Li was true, while Fei advised him to hide as Li might seek revenge. Wang Bin reassured them but mentioned he needed to head home. He promised to treat them to some wine when he returned. Wang Bin's arrival at home surprised his parents, and they were worried, thinking something was wrong. He informed them that he had won the lottery but decided not to disclose the truth about the apocalyptic world, fearing they might think he was crazy. In addition to visiting his parents and providing them with money, Wang Bin had another purpose for coming home. He then went to see his uncle and brought some gifts. His uncle, Zhao had a history of hunting in the mountains when he was younger and owned gunpowder and an air rifle. Uncle Zhao asked Wang Bin how he could assist. Wang Bin requested to buy his uncle's air rifle. Uncle Zhao inquired if Wang Bin intended to do anything illegal and urged him not to engage in any reckless activities. Wang Bin explained to his uncle that he and his friends wanted to practice shooting and gain experience with a real weapon. He mentioned that they intended to use the weapon for self-defense in case they encountered any dangerous animals. He expressed his desire to buy his uncle's air rifle and began discussing the money. Uncle Zhao, understanding Wang Bin's intentions, offered to lend him the rifle, emphasizing that as long as it wasn't for illegal or criminal activities, it was fine. He reassured Wang Bin not to worry about the money, as they were family. Uncle Zhao then provided Wang Bin with an air rifle, a gun, and a bottle of anesthesia. He cautioned Wang Bin not to be seen carrying the rifle openly, as he could be arrested and potentially jailed. After obtaining the air rifle and leaving some money for his parents, Wang Bin returned to the city. This time, he was well prepared, having stocked up on food and bought a phone for Xiaoye along with some portable chargers. In addition to the air rifle, Wang Bin had purchased a new dagger, machete, and a detonator that was used to bomb mountains in the past. Wang Bin hoped that Xiaoye was safe and hadn't been caught by the White Tiger group during his absence. The transportation time arrived and Wang Bin was informed by the system that his destination had humans nearby and was given the option to continue, which he confirmed. He then appeared in the same room he had left previously, and Xiaoye was in the adjacent room, down to her last pack of food. She was emotional upon seeing Wang Bin and hugged him, relieved that he hadn't forgotten about her. 
Wang Bin, concerned about her injuries, inquired about what had happened since he left. Xiaoya explained that things had taken a turn for the worse after he left. The leader of the White Tiger Group had put a bounty on their heads, and all the wandering survivors had started searching for them. She had been worried about him, and had gone to check the news she heard about him, but it had turned out to be a trap, and she had narrowly avoided being captured a few times. Wang Bin realized that Xiaoya was risking her life to find him when she heard the news about him. He promised her to make those who had hurt her pay, and would make sure the White Tiger Group would cease to exist. Like and subscribe, if you want me to continue the next chapters and thank you for watching.